team is when we face adversity is always uh, we stay com composed and poised within that. So um, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. That edge that those two guys bring, is that something that was missing last year that this team has that it puts it over the top a little bit? Yeah, I mean, when you have guys like that with that type of personality, I think it's um, something that we could um, reflect on and lead off of. And I think Cormac and Cormac being as intense he is and Harrison with his goofy personality, but he's, he's able to kind of just have that dog mentality when he steps up to the floor. I think that's something that's needed on the team. And when you have those two type of guys that with that type of energy and intensity, I think it's good for the whole group. Thank you. Does Michigan State remind you of anyone you played this year? Um, I mean, no, because I think they play their own brand of basketball. Um, I think every team is different. Um, but I mean, and I mean, they they had a, a really good schedule. So I mean, I wouldn't compare them to anyone um, other than that because I know how uh, well of a coach Tom Izzo is and how he gets his guys going. So. Mm -hmm. that's what did that conversation go like? And how important is it for you to kind of connect to him to maybe get him a little bit more comfortable than perhaps he's played with like? Yeah, I mean, just to um, you know, have fun out there and kind of just play with a free mind. Um, I know um, sometimes it can be hard just because of, you know, it's March Madness, you want to play really well, and you kind of just put a lot of, like, you know, pressure on yourself to perform well. But... Um, I think Elliot has done a good job of doing that all year long in terms of you know playing freely, um, being who he is, the playmaker he is, getting downhill, being aggressive. So uh, he's going to be more than fine tomorrow. I know he was probably hard on himself after the game. Um, that's what a couple of reporters have told me. But I mean that just speaks of how special of a kid he is, and I'm um, just kind of just giving that guidance of wisdom that he's going to be good. If you think of the conversations you've had with him since he got here, have you been able to get a gauge of when you know you're, sink, you're kind of sinking? Kind of connected with what you're saying, and if so, did you get that vibe yesterday? Um, yeah, I mean, I think one thing about him is he listens and he'll ask questions, and um, that just shows how much he wants to learn and become better as a player and as a person. And um, I kind of got that vibe just because of um, his reaction and his body language was he responded well, and um, that's one thing about how mature he is as a player, just for being a freshman. I mean, I know he's supposed to be in high school right now, finish up his senior year, but. Uh, just his maturity level is it's insane. If I can stand up real quickly, do you think the experience and maturity of the rest of you guys kind of elevates him a little bit? Maybe it forces him to be more mature, but you guys are the standard, so mm -hmm. he's striving to kind of be where you guys are now. I think that's great, and I think it, with experience and with maturity, it uh, uplifts everyone on the team, and um, <clears throat> it kind of challenges everyone to kind of just rise up to the, to the occasion. Because um, when you have veteran players and players that have experienced uh, tournament games, uh, you know, down to the wire type of games, it kind of, kind of, it makes everyone calm in those type of situations, knowing that um, we have each other's backs and we're gonna stay poised throughout it all. RJ, Tyson was telling me he messaged you on Instagram like a couple weeks ago. Do you yeah. Know what he said? Yeah, I think he just congratulated me. He, yeah, he actually congratulated me on just like my achievements and successes um, just throughout this year. Uh, me and Tyson, I know him since we were like in fourth grade and um, just kind of just received that message from him, kind of just meant a lot and just shows how much like, you know, us New Yorkers, you know, care for each other. And that age you guys played on, do you remember if it was the New York or the Brooklyn Rens? It might, yeah, it might have been Brooklyn Rens. Yeah, it was Brooklyn Rens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then in high school, you guys obviously played against each other a lot. Mm -hmm. um, one game that stands out was the championship game of your guys' league. Yeah. Um, I think you guys won that, but do you remember like playing that game, what it was like to play against him? Yeah, I mean, it was a highly anticipated game. Um, it was actually a great game. came down to the wire. It was a lot of back and forth throughout the whole game. They had a lot of talented players from Tyson to Musa, Cisse, um, a couple of other players I can't name on the top of my head. But just the environment well, was great, mm -hmm. and um, I was just glad that we came out with the win. What is he like as a player, or what was he like in high school? I'm sure he's changed. A uh, super electric player. He was able to get downhill, get to his spots. Um, really talented and uh, does a good job of kind of just, you know, he could also create for his own. He doesn't have to rely on anyone else. And um, I think that's what I saw from him in high school, but also in college. He's telling me he kind of has a chip on his shoulder. I've recruited in high school, mm -hmm. obviously went to Northwestern and transferred. What do you think, like, how does that translate into his game? And do you think, like, are you prepared for that kind of chip to come out tomorrow? I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like he, you know, played with that. You know his whole life, just that chip on his shoulder, and 
Um, he's a really good player, and um, I'm expected to come out for him tomorrow, but at the same time for me as well. RJ, uh, to get back to New York, you recognize this guy? Mike no. Machete from mm -mm. high school? Okay. Did he go that step of that? He did. I got to go call their game tomorrow. I was just curious to know okay, if you guys yeah. had any memories of each other. Nah, I don't, I don't think I know Mike. Okay. <laughs> um, getting back to the game, now mm -hmm. that you're back in the tournament, is there a difference in having an experienced team overall versus experience in the tournament? Um, I think, yeah. I mean, I think just having experience overall just um, makes the team better. And um, I think we've had a lot of guys from, you know, from myself and Mondo with experience, you know, winning, going to the national championship, from Cormac playing in the playing tournament, and a couple of guys that haven't really experienced anything like this. I think just that combination of everything just makes everything a lot better. And it brings that chip out on the shoulder for everyone because we all want to win and we all want to experience what Coach Davis always talks about. And um, I think just staying comp compo poised and comp keeping our composure throughout it all, um, that's the maturity level that we got to get to, and I know we have. Arthur, <laughs> just curious, were you watching uh, some of the other games uh, around the tournament last night after your game, and which one's caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the games um, <laughs> they ran a lot of, uh, ran late, um, but I watched the majority of them. Um, I want to say one game that caught my eye, probably like the Kansas and the Sanford game. I mean, I mean, that was just a crazy game. I just marched, um, kind of, you saw the block, and then they called a foul. So just stuff like that that happens, and you can never, like, relax for one mo moment. Arthur, this is the first time in school history that two top five scorers have played on the same team. Can you give perspective kind of what that means in terms of UNC basketball? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I can, like, put it into perspective because it's just, I mean, you look at UNC, you know all the great players that have come through this program, and for me and Mondo just to be in the top five list, uh, that's special right there. And that's a surreal moment, and um, it just speaks to how much of our hard work and how, like, we stayed down through it all. And I mean, I just can't be more proud of me and him just for just accomplishing that and continue to keep, still do it. Yeah. Um, similarities, I would say, um, the desire to win. Um, they both have the same mindset of just going out there in each game and playing Carolina basketball, but at the same time bringing that same intensity. Um, pers I would say differences is their personalities. Uh, um, you know, Coach Davis is definitely like more like you know goofy in a way, and um, I think Coach Williams is more like level-headed and uh, composed, but. Um, they're similar in terms of they just want to win, and when you have two uh, legendary coaches like that that you're playing for, it's um, it's a great feeling. Um, me and him were actually just joking before we, I came out here, just talking about uh, different artists that we listened to, and um, from like Lil Durk to Wild Wave to like Young Boy, uh, just like stuff like that, and we'll just laugh about it. And if I send him a song, he doesn't like it, he'll let me know. So. Just that type of relationship that we have, I think that goes beyond basketball. Yeah, I put him on the little dirt. Yeah. Did you see that he got some some heat for saying that was his favorite artist the other day? I didn't. I don't know why he would receive some heat because Lil Durk is the greatest. So. People didn't believe him. <laughs> didn't believe him? Yeah. He didn't believe he actually listened to him. No, he literally listened to Lil Durk. I, I promise you, he does. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it does make it a fun matchup because they like to get on the run, but so do we. And I, did, I think they do a good job of kind of just pushing the ball ahead and um, getting out in transition. So we're going to do a good job of just playing transition defense, but at the same time play our basketball, play our pace, um, make it out the run as well. And then the difference between Tyson and high school now, like you saw in person in high school, obviously, you see the film now. Uh, I'd probably say pace. I think um, that's like the, the biggest difference going from high school to college is uh, understanding the pace. So his pace has definitely got a lot better and um, he's a lot craftier and stronger now and uh, that he's in college. So yeah.